right, folks, it is time. It is the BKBK broadcast. All right, podcast. I said broadcast. I'm so fired up. I my words straight. But it is the BKBK podcast where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign supreme. I'm your host, Brandon Phillips, and I'm joined by my co host, Brian Taylor and Captain Kyle McKenna. Unfortunately, our guy Kerry couldn't make it to this episode, but he will for sure be on the next one. And Kerry, we know that you're happy, just as happy as we are. We're fired up. That Let's dude is giggling. He's giggling somewhere, man. He's giggling somewhere in the corner. He's over there giggling. <laughs> Definitely. I, I can't even, I can't say that I can't believe it, but I kind of borderline can't believe it. But I love it. I love it. That's you know right. what I mean? You should. You should. The Jets of 4 2. None of us thought that we were going to be here because remember, in our last podcast before the season began, we, you know, went with our predictions of what the Jets' record would be. I believe I picked seven and nine, or uh, not seven and nine, but seven and ten, maybe even six and eleven. But I think it was seven and ten. And uh, I don't know. We 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 have a really good chance at passing that. You what? What? Re- dude, really good chance. Look look at my sunglasses. This is this is purely for effect here. I'm cool as a fan right now, like Biggie. You know what I'm saying? Cool as a- <laughs> we are four. And two, wrap your brain around the fact that the last time we were two games above 500 was 2015, my friend. 2015. We we could end up if the Chiefs beat the Bills in first place in the AFC East. Yo, those sunglasses make you look like Dr. Octopus, bro. What? Uh, yeah. what? They're, they're awesome, bro. I don't even know what you're talking yeah. about, man. And their prescription, too, to so take that with you. You know what I mean? I can see. Like, are, 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 are they, are they, are they, are they the, the transitions the, that are nah, here? Nah. In, isn't there? Nah, because if they're transitions, I, 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 they wouldn't be dark right now. Cause I mean, you got the sun right. coming in the window. Yeah, well, um, not, not, but anyway, wait, let me let me finish my point though. Nah, 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 you know, nah, 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 nah. Seven nah, and nah. nine, bro. What are you talking about? We might end up at seven and ten, man. <laughs> Get out of here with that. I think that Mr. Optimism over here um, did pick 10 wins. And we got to go back to the tape and check it. But I believe that everyone laughed at me, and I took receipts at the time. Did we laugh? Um, Wow, we took receipts, he said. I took receipts at the time that I I said 10 wins because, look, it's a long season, and, you know, our optimism right now is great. Our, Our feeling right now is great. I go into all these games, and I say to myself, we did not win this game until you know it's double zero, you know three zeros on the clock, and um, and all the flags have gone away, right? Because you never know when a roughing the passer is going to come in and lose a game for you. you got that. Um, right. We could chop that up a little bit about some of the calls early on against the Jets that Green Bay wasn't getting, but I think it evened out towards the end. But a lot of reason for optimism and a lot of stuff to talk about in this great win. All right, so then listen, let's let's talk about it, all right? Okay. So basically, the Jets are now 4-2. and two, So what does this mean? What does this win mean? How do we look forward from here? Listen, listen. This, this win, we went to Green Bay, right? Think about how everybody felt about the Giants for beating Green Bay in London, right? We beat right. Green Bay. Neutral playing field. Right, neutral playing field in London, right? I mean, no, 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 no. We went to their house after they lost to the Giants. The other New York team, they felt disrespected. Aaron Rodgers went into the locker room, and his guys were talking about, what if we lose to the Jets? And he went off like, nah, we not going to talk like that. We got to think positively. And what do we do? He got to think a whole lot more positively now that we just done hung a 27-10 win on him, right? And for us... We're a young team, right? The baby Jets right here. A lot of the the people that we are relying on, Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, I mean, Zach Wilson, year one or two players, they're playing vital roles in our offense, our defense. Sauce Sauce Gardner out there knocking down passes. Even young ones that are still – that, like, are technically veterans now, like – Yeah. Brandon Williams. Right. right, might even be the defensive player of the week this week, and he's still young. He's only in year four. 
Yes. He's on his first contract. That's right. Okay. I mean, everybody's on their first contract except for a couple out there, right? I mean, when you look at the entire roster and our starters, it's crazy right Hello. now. So when, when you think about the rest of the schedule, and we'll get to that at another time, they are definitely very winnable games. The Bears um, on the schedule, the Jags on the schedule. Um, Denver I mean, coming up next. We can beat Denver. We got a shot. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, and this gives us the confidence to feel like we can go anywhere and beat anyone. And that's yep. what you need in your team. You definitely have a team that's trending up in confidence and swagger. And, I mean, I, I don't think you guys would disagree. This is the best the defense has played yeah. all year. Yeah. Um, you really got to see the, you know, the, the Sauce Gardner, DJ Reed component, very similar to a Cromarty, Darrell Revis type of defense where you can put those guys on an island by themselves and they can do all the other stuff. Yeah. And then Top you get five tandem in the league. Top five. Yeah. You get Quincy Williams back this week, and he made a lot more splash than he did opposite. I mean, there's a couple times we called him out in, in coverage, and I think we all have identified that <laughs> – what did you say, Brandon? <laughs> that he should go to DV school a little bit in the offseason. Did you say that? that? No, that, that, that was Curry. That was Curry. That, that was Curry that said that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so then the um, – but, but, I mean, he comes up, and he, he hits hard. Quan Alexander is good for a play a game where you're like, he pops somebody. Yo, yeah. Wow, he yeah. came up there. And then CJ Mosley is playing the best that he ever has as a Jet. Eddie Eddie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, may, maybe the first half of that Buffalo game a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, but that was a very small size. But I think that the emergence of this defense as a real legitimate defense that is rushing the passer with a variety of people. Um, Quentin Williams, probably defensive player of the week. I, I, I don't think there's even going to be an argument. I don't know what else is going to have to happen in order for him to lose that at this point. And you throw in that block field goal as well. Um, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. But I think that I, I think that you have the, the training confidence up that this win gives. And then on offense, you have an offense that didn't beat itself today. You know, like there are a couple times where you're like, oh, Zach Wilson, why'd you throw that ball? But for the most part, He's thrown like 35 passes in two weeks, right? Yeah. Because our run our run game has been so strong. And I'll tell you right now, probably only a few people watching this game noticed this today, but the ultimate troll move was that Mike uh, LaFleur ran the Green Bay sweep that Vince Lombardi invented. He ran it twice. <laughs> the first time was a 10-yard game for Brees Hall. The second time was a touchdown. For 34 that is, yards. That, that There's video of Vincent Barty, like, putting that play on the board and saying, this is our, our bread and butter, our, you know, our thing. And I know, I know it because when we used to, we used to run it at Brooklyn Tech and we actually called it Green Bay. So it's like, they're going to run in there and they're going to run Green Bay's plays, classic Green Bay plays on them. It's, it's almost like a little, like, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting, we're getting deep here uh, into this. So let's and get that deeper was, than that. And let's get deeper than that. He did it against his older brother. Right. So uh, <laughs> at, that's at definitely home. Thanksgiving conversation right there. How about when I ran Vince Lombardi's play up his butt and, uh, and scored a touchdown with Brees Hall? Wow. Now, and and, and Bre <laughs> Bre Brees Hall is emerging as a, you know, as a fantasy owner of Brees Hall. He is a legitimate, you know, I'm, he's going to score touchdowns. He's yeah. going to run for 100, 100 yards a game. 116 and, today. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and Michael Carter, you were throwing him in there fresh at the end of the game, and, and it was like he was playing at a different speed yeah. than everybody else. Yeah. I'd like to see Garrett Wilson get more involved. I'd like to see Elijah Moore get more involved. I think that if, if you're going to play games like that from this point forward, get them some carries, get them some screens. Um, yeah. But I think I think there's also the, 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 the part, and this is the last point I'll make on this, the, if you're going to get – the tight ends involved, like we got them involved today. There's somebody else that's not going to get involved. Um, we have a lot of weapons, believe it or not, that we can't all use at the same time, and it's hard. It's hard to use them all. Yeah, know? that's that, that's right. You know, there, there's only one football, and you know, Brian, Kyle, you guys made some great points. And uh, since you guys didn't cover the point that I'm going to make, you know, I think I'll just complete the circle right here, and the coaching. So the coaching, I think was fabulous. And the reason why 
I think it was fabulous is because nothing stood out that we needed to object to while we were watching the game. There were no texts that we sent one another that were like, what the heck is Salah doing? What is this and that? And this goes, you know, this well, is a complete reciprocal, you know, um, um, of what it was like in like game one or so, you know. You know, I know Brian wants to chime in, but just let me just finish. Saying sure, what go I'm ahead. Saying. Yep. You know, I mean, here's the thing. We're going up against the Green Bay Packers, a historically great franchise with a historically great quarterback, probably in the top three of quarterbacks of all time at home. Okay. And we're the Jets. All righty. What I just said to you basically speaks to everything that the Jets would basically go into a situation and lose to, even while we're up, you know, and it would be some kind of, you know, mishap, whether it be a fumble or bad coaching or just a bad, you know, like a poorly, you know, interpreted, you know, a, a call or, or a poor play selection or just overall just poor game management. And as a whole, that did not happen. You know what I'm saying? So to me, I feel like Robert Sala is maturing. He's getting better. He's graduating up into a confident and competent head coach. And, um, you know, I, 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 we've just seen so many different times in our history of being Jet fans where, you know, it just didn't work out for us, you know, going up against a great team with a great uh, history like the Green Bay Packers. And somehow, last second of the game, we'd end up losing. You know what I'm saying? But we, yeah. did, we didn't just win. We punched them in the face twice. Yeah, we, we beat them. Right. We we absolutely beat them um, in all three phases. Right. Yeah. Offense, defense and special teams. We really beat them scored in all three phases as well. Right. Well, did we score on defense? No, we didn't score on defense, but we scored on. Yes, we did score on defense. Right. We did score on defense. We did. We, did. we scored on special teams. We scored on defense and we scored twice on. Uh, no, we didn't score no, on we defense. Did. We, 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 scored. we didn't score on defense. We scored on special teams. But I, I would say this. Yeah. The only the only um, thing I would say contrary as far as the coaching was the end of the first half. That made me frustrated. Right. And this right. And, and it was, I think, two weeks in a row that the same thing occurred because we did it against Pittsburgh as well, where we were up by three. We have the ball. We're like on the 45 or 50. We just breeze, just ran for like 10 yards. Right. So we're not quite in field goal range yet. We're taking our time. We're huddling up. You know, we're taking a whole bunch of time. A whole minute went off. And I guess, you know, we didn't want to give Aaron Rodgers the ball back per se. But we, what we didn't do is execute. Right. We were lollygagging as if we already had field goal range where we were at least going to score another point, another three points. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we're going to get the ball at the beginning of the second half. And so this is what you kick off for at the beginning of the game. This series right there. And I was frustrated with how we went about our business towards the end of the, of the first half. That's the only thing I would pretty much object to as far as how they coach this game. But I'll say this, as far as the positive, we are outscoring. Remember I sent this earlier on in the week. We are outscoring our opponents 89 to 20 in the fourth quarter. When was the last time we even heard of that? Let me, let me repeat that. 80, I just added 10 more points because we just blank the Packers, right? So 89 to 20, we are outscoring our opponents in the fourth quarter. Oh, my God. It, it's, oh my really God. An ama it's, it, it's really amazing to see that, uh, that we're bringing up stats like this and, you know, multiple rookies of the week. You know, week after week, we got a, a different guy. We've had one guy that's been rookie of the week twice. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if you guys read The Athletic at all. Um, it has a subscription wall, so um, sometimes I don't forward the the uh, the articles to you because of, if you don't have a subscription, you can't read them. But I'm gonna I'm gonna take the the bulk of this article that I just read and send it to you about this guy, Coach Smash, that they have. I think his Dan, his name is Dan Smashish, and uh, he is what a name. the game. He's the game coordinator. That was our meeting. For the Jets, and uh, this whole article is about how he's their analytics guy next to 
if you look in the booth where you have the, the camera on the floor, he's all the way down at the end. And he's the guy in Sal's ear that's doing all the clock management stuff, all the analytics, should we go for it, and all this stuff. And he also does this, like, presentation every week for five minutes about, like, league rules and trends in the league. And it, you could see it in the game, like, when he did a whole thing on roughing the passer this week, I guess, because of everything that's been going on. So you saw there was even a point where Quinn Williams put his hands up because he didn't want to get a roughing the passer while the ball's on the ground. Um so these guys are getting coached not in like just the hey you need to do this on this like they're getting coached in the details of the game from elite level guys like Grant Boyer, Robert Sala, Lafleur, and then also um, guys like this guy Coach Nash. So I'll send you guys that article and anybody out there that that has a subscription to the Athletic, um, really really good article by Zach Rosenblatt, the beat reporter for the Jets there, but. Yeah, I would agree with you, Brandon. The coaching has been great. Yeah, I think coaching has been great, man. You know, who's dinging? Is that me dinging or someone else dinging? It's not yeah, me. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so go ahead. you know, I, I I just think, basically, I'm just seeing, with everything that we just spoke about, we're seeing growth in every aspect. Yes. I mean, you know, <laughs> even, even the offensive line. And we've been killing the O-line. We've been killing them. I mean, it's it, it's like, you know, we're, we're seeing Dwayne Brown. We're seeing my daughter. Uh, we're, we're, even now, Dwayne Brown, he's, he's, he's in the game now. He's playing. And I'm just seeing the O-line kind of just gelling and developing and yeah. just getting together well. Yeah. And um, sorry, guys, my daughter, she's, you know, terrible twos kind of thing. It is what it is, baby. <laughs> you know, thank goodness she's cute. You know, um. But uh, I'm just seeing a total growth. Remember the pass rush that we were not seeing at all? We had, you know, four, I, we had four sacks today, baby. Four sacks and a bunch of pressures. I don't have the number on the pressures. And a number of knockdowns. Actually, we kind of beat up. Beat up Aaron Rodgers a little bit. He was oh, yeah. getting holding his head. He was holding his leg a little bit, his elbow. You know, he made a lot of, for one of the most accurate or the most accurate quarterbacks ever to play the game, even more than Brady. He was kind of not really on his mark 100 percent either. Well, I, the throws that 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 I saw, I was like, "Oh my goodness, here it goes!" And then I'm like, "Oh snap!" You know. <laughs> well, I, I I said it early on. I'm like, they look sleepy right now, right? Like London took a lot out of them, and we came from the jump and punched them in the mouth. And yeah. you know, if we're not the ball hitting the ground, that's a pick six in the first. You know, that would have been the first drive. Right, the first four plays we would have had a pick six with Sauce Gardner, right? But it, it grazed the ground and and then it ended up being there. But one of the things I would say is that I was frustrated in the first half is we had so many opportunities, batted balls that fell to the ground instead of ending up in our hands. And you know, that play and you know, a fumble or something like that that we didn't end up getting. Um and think about this. We ended the game twenty seven ten. <laughs> Wait, what, what was it tied 3-3 at half it was tied 3-3 yeah. three, three at half so think of what we did in the second half man crazy yeah, we all... no break that's what happened yeah i even texted y'all remember at half yeah. time, i was like now it's time for all gas no break you know and hey listen Salah did it you know Salah did it the play calling did it his coaching did it and our players man they were they were positively motivated and did it you know what i mean so let, listen, was let's dj Khaled? god did yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about a lot of positives, right? So, and sure. you know, let's get into positives as well as negatives. But let's focus in on the positives now and the negatives. You know, okay. so I'm gonna start it off. My first positive has got to be. I think he's the player of the game for us. Brees Hall. Brees Hall. I mean, I remember Brian. You know, I, I drafted him in fantasy in the second round. Brian was like, "Yeah, I like the pick, but you know, you might have picked him too early." And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm confident in Brees. And you know what? Brees is coming through week four, week five, week six. All righty. And he's honestly, he's one of the top top backs in the league. You know, I'd put him definitely top 10 right now. Yeah. I'm not going to give him top five yet, but I'm going to give him top 10 right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I just hate all your fantasy drafts. So that's probably why I had a slam. Yeah, yeah, that's you, fine. you always hate my fantasy <laughs> drafts. And you know I, what? I, I hate yours. <laughs> As as a guy that that has both Reese Hall and Jonathan Taylor in fantasy right now, um, I'm very thankful that I 
pick <laughs> Brees Hall. Um, right. you know, I, I'm, I'm sure I speak for Jonathan Taylor uh, franchisees all over the world right now um, where we thought that that would be like you know for what, sure. Kyle, it, it, yeah. Listen, it's his ankle, man. It's like you can't escape injury in football. It's all a dice roll. I guarantee you if his ankle was good, he'd be leading the league in rushing. The kid, he's a, he's a great, great back. Well, well, send, him, send, send, send him to whoever Quincy Williams went to. Um, because Quincy Williams got back in two weeks, two weeks, yeah, and he's coming with the with with the wood every time he gets in the backfield. Um, the uh, you know, but Brees Hall is a, a super positive, but that old line that's in front of him, the current uh, old line that we positive, have, folks, we are on positives and negatives yeah. right now. Here's another positive. I want to hear it, Kyle. Well. I had a, a discussion with the guys I was watching the game with about what you do when Fant comes back, right? Or when Max Mitchell comes back. Um, and and I'm not moving Elijah Vera Tucker back to guard because Nate Herbig is playing so good. Hmm. He's playing so good that his name wasn't mentioned the entire game, yeah. right? And for an offensive lineman, especially a right guard, your name is only getting mentioned when you when you get beat by yep. somebody on a pass rush. And and remember, we're playing against the number one one of the top three defense in the in the league today. Um and I didn't hear him get get pressure on him. And ABT has played three positions and the tackle he's played better than he played at guard. Robo. So uh I'm I'm keeping him. At tackle, and Dwayne Brown, I feel like with the addition of him, he's kind of allowed the O line to kind of congeal in a positive way. Like he's doing well in the run game, you know, mm -hmm. and he's doing pretty well pass blocking too. I mean, that big boy, he's out there. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. I'm, I'm... Yeah, on, on Braxton Barrios is uh, you know, touchdown. He was all the way in, in the end zone yeah. for that man. He, he blocked his, he blocked the safety. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Uzama had a great block on that run, yeah, as well. He did. If, if you think about it, you know, and you guys are always calling for creativity within the the offensive game plan, and I think you're 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 right on with that. Um, Kerry as well. Uh, they scored a touchdown off of a reverse to Barrios, and off of that Green Bay sweep that Brees Hall ran today. So two touchdowns off of run variations that aren't your between the tackle you know, straight ahead thing. Yeah, Brees is showing a little bit of that stutter step. Um, you know, I, I, I compare it to like a in his prime Le'Veon Bell, not Le'Veon Bell that played for the Jets or anybody else. Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, Le'Veon. Yeah, Pittsburgh Steelers, yeah. Le'Veon Bell. Yeah. <laughs> but um, if I was going to bring out a, a, a negative when it comes to the offense is there's a little bit too much uh, processing time with Zach Wilson at times uh, in the passing game. And I think that might have been because the pass protection was good, right? Um, usually that means that they're rushing three or four and there's a lot of guys in coverage. So you're running concepts that if they're all covered, you know, you don't necessarily have a check down on it. So that, that might have been part of it. I don't think they were – I saw – I, I don't think I re I don't think I ever saw them rush only three. It looked like four to five a lot. Yep. I just think the defensive line was picking up the blocks extremely well. And when Zach noticed that he had time, I think he would. I think he wanted to try to make a big play and go kind of deep, which I kind of respect. But you have to be a little bit smarter about it, and hopefully he can kind of get that in time. You yeah. know, he got mm -hmm. lucky by not getting planted on his butt a lot in this game. He was able to, you know, uh, um, escape a couple things. He did what make one kind of dumb throw that luckily it wasn't picked off, you know, as a result of him kind of holding on to the ball too long. So, you know, when we, like, face the Bills, you better smarten well, up because that's not going to happen. Well, You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and that was going to be my negative as well, right? I mean, it's hard to really pick a negative when you win 27-10 to 10 on the road. Um at but Green Bay. At Green Woo! Bay, right? I mean, it's hard, but I would say, listen, Zach Wilson had 110 yards passing. How many attempts? Like 11, and he was like 5 of 11. 
So he was under 60%. Oh, it, it, no, it was higher than that. It was like uh, like 10 of 18 or something like was that. Was it? Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, no, okay. So I'll, I'll give you that. Um, Anything under 25 is considered low. 10 of 18. So 10 of 18. He's right. So 10 of 18. Um, he took two sacks. He took those sacks. Those were not on the offensive line. He held the ball too long. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been there. Um, and my thing is this. If it's not there, then run the ball. Run the ball a couple yards. Get what you want to get. Get down, you know, you know, from that perspective. Um, and, you know, again, just like you said against Buffalo in the first half, instead of it being 3-3, we would have been down 23-3, right? And then what do you have to do? Now you have to throw in the second half. And right. it's – I don't think it was the play calling. I think sometimes the play was there, but to your point, Brandon, he was just looking for the deep ball versus looking for the crossers versus looking for whatever, um, and he just wasn't making a play. And if that ball got intercepted, <laughs> that he was going out of bounds, the play that you referenced, yeah. I would have just lost my wig at that point <laughs> in time. I really would have because it, yeah. it just wasn't necessary. It just really wasn't. I understand you're trying to make a play, but the guy really wasn't open. You know, are you, you know? Here's the thing that, like, kind of, he needs to kind of re-educate re himself because I'm sure he was, you know, like like you were just saying, he needs to not do that because if he would have gotten picked off doing that, then you would have lost your wig. Yeah. But think about it. He did the same thing when he found Corey Davis for that deep ball and Corey Davis. No, it, it no. no, 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 no. That was, that, that was, was a pl that was the play. That was it. Was uh, you know, it was out and up. And, 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 no, 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 no. It was des design rollout out and up, and the he the corner bit, and he threw the ball short. By the way, should have yeah, been a touchdown. Should have been a yeah. touchdown, but he threw it yeah. short as well. That's another ding I could put on him because right. that should have been a touchdown. But Brian, he threw it short because he was holding the ball on too long, and he was trying to escape and run. He was running to his right, and he threw it kind of like a hop skip throw, all arm. Powerful arm, by the way, but it was short. So that's my thing. I think he held it too long. So in one sense, he made a great play, even though it was short. It was still a great play. And then in the second, it's the same play that you were saying that you would have lost your wig. Nah, watch, I, watch I, it over again, bro. That that was I'd a like, design I, I, rollout. Okay. I'd, I'd like to see that play again. Brian, I, I, did, I disagree. My point is he, he, needs to, he needs to be more disciplined, and I don't think he should make either one of those throws. Go ahead, Kyle. On that particular play, I, I disagree with Brian. I think it was a scramble drill. Um, and this, I'll tell you why. Um, that out and up that he did is what you teach somebody who has a short route on a scramble drill. So you tell the short route to break long. You tell the um, the op the opposite side route to cross, and you you tell the the long route to come back. So it it, it looked to me. Like it was a, a scramble adjustment. But wait, wait, wait. But Corey so was coming. deep, though. But you said initially that the short guy goes long, but Corey was the deep guy. He no, he was. Came he, back. he was. He was like. It was like a, a and a, like a quick out route. Mm. He ran an out and up. Yeah, he ran an out and up. Yeah, I know. But but I, I gotta I gotta see what kind of pressure there was because it, it didn't seem like a like a pre-designed rollout. They did run a couple pre-designed rollouts later he on. He was pressured. He was. Um, but. I mean, that's my opinion. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, and, yeah. and listen, may maybe he – that was a touchdown um, last year, right, that he made with Corey Davis or whatever way he threw yeah, it. Yeah. And that was the, you know, the scramble play probably definitely. Cleveland he did, the, did the same thing in Cleveland too. Yeah. So, I mean, but, but listen, I, I think ultimately he's got to play better. I go back to the conversation that we had at the beginning of the season. Huh? You and I are basically saying the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're, we're on the same yeah. page. And and listen, I'm I'm a Zach Wilson fan. I, I wanted him to be drafted and, and all of that. Um, this team is built, like I said, to start the year. This team is built to win with or without Zach Wilson. He has everything he needs. This is not Sam Darnold. You know, uh, the, the, he has the coaching. He has the players around him. He has everything he needs for us as a team to win and if we don't or if he doesn't look like he's the quarterback we need him to be then we will be dipping into the draft come next year 
right? I mean, yeah. I, I don't want it to be the case. I want him to be that because I want to draft other things, right, ultimately. But he's got to do better in a game like this than to have 110 yards and be under 60% completion percentage. It's just, well, it has to be. I know, I, well, I, I definitely agree with you with the completion percentage. Like, yeah. I would love to see him more in that 60 to 70 range than that 50 to 60 range, which he's consistently been the whole time he's been on the Jets, right? Yeah. That, that that's that's what we complained about Josh Allen with when he was coming out, right? That yeah. he was a career a career fifty five percent guy. So now now we're seeing that from a guy. But he, he he's going to marinate a little bit too. If that gives me sixty two percent. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm happy because not well, many quarterbacks are going to be seventy percent like a Drew Brees. It's it's like well, it's what gonna, what does that sixty two look like, right? I mean, is it is yeah. it turnover filled? I can't just say sixty two is the only thing I'm looking for. But how many, I mean, atten- how many attempts is it? Right. right. How many either, attempts? But if we're talking percentages, 62 is a solid number. Well, 62 is in that 60 to 70 range that I'm saying. So yeah. we agree on that. Yeah. What I what I was a bit frustrated with today was the receiver's inability to run first down routes. Garrett Wilson had some 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 routes that you know they may have been past breakups too. Good um Zaire Alexander, good corner play, but you got to run past the sticks yeah, man. on a third down. You can't catch a ball, you know, two yards short. You got to have that, like, that acuity, that awareness of where the sticks are, how to adjust your routes based on that. And uh, a quarterback has to know that, too. And Zach Wilson also, he slid before the first down. Yep. Like Kyler Murray did yeah. um, a couple of weeks ago. And, and uh, you know, I'm all for quarterback sliding, but you have to understand – where you are yeah. and on the Where field. You are. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean that I mean, we're being nitpicky. Like I said, I, I'd rather if we could have two hundred episodes where we're nitpicky after a twenty seven to ten win. Um, <laughs> you know, I'll take it I'll take it every day. And I think that like, you know, if if, if some of the things we're bringing up here were done, you know, maybe we win thirty five to ten. Right? You know, it's not it, it's not that big of a difference. I would have liked to have scored that last touchdown. I thought it was great that we ran like almost 12 plays, it seemed like, between the 20 yard line and the goal line in that last drive. Got to punch it in, uh, though, baby. Got to. Yeah. Well, I mean, then Nate Herbert gets his helmet ripped off by the D lineman. Um, and that penalty is a, a whole whopping three inches of uh, gain. Well, let, let's say this. So, so we're, we're still talking positives and negatives, right? Um, we didn't bring up the special teams, we didn't bring them up under this context, right? Special teams was huge, huge. Yep. huge today, right? Scored a touchdown, blocked two kicks. Quinnen um, and Michael Clements. Yeah, Woo! man. It, it. I mean, that's that's crazy. It just it just doesn't happen normally, right? So when you think of the special teams, um, scoring points like that, we didn't miss a field goal, right? I mean, we didn't miss an extra point, so we were totally clean. Well, actually, we no, got one we block. Had a, we, we, had one had block. A, we had a we had a punt block. We had a pl- we had a punt block. block. And okay. We did miss the field goal. We did. Yes, yeah, we, we did. missed a fifty yarder. All right, so I totally take it back, man. Special teams suck. No, well, no, I think that, <laughs> I, I think you're absolutely right in 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 shouting out the special teams, and when you yeah. look at the consistency of a guy like Justin Hardy, um, I I think Justin Hardy is the best special teams cover guy in the league right now you love that um, guy. you love him. i think he's good and and and, 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 and day one he yeah did. and if we no i get hey listen I'm, I'm, i know I'm, why you guys hate him you guys hate him because i don't i don't hate him at all i just i just i just i just love that you love him kyle i'm props i love happy bro they're like you called it i love justin hardy and i love hardy's uh bacon cheeseburgers uh <laughs> you know just as much um but when you look at the people on our special teams, and we got into this a little bit on the text thread about why are we releasing Lawrence Cager, right? Like, we've gone this far with Lawrence Cager. We're developing him. And then somebody said, yeah, well, we kept Yaboa. I did. And it, Yeah, and so we're, we're all scratching our head and saying, well, we're keeping Yaboa over um, Cager. And then when I see Michael Clemens block the punt, who's right next to him taking up two, so that Michael Clemens can go through Kenny Yabo. Mm-hmm. So you're getting you're getting roster contributions from that that are going all the way down to 51, 52, 53, right? Like 
this used to be a team where um, nobody wanted to pick up any of our guys from the waiver wire. What happened after uh, the last cut? Every single person that we cut got picked up by another team, right? It was Pinnock was on our team. That's what's up, right? So then you look at, at our manipulation of the practice squad now, and we try to keep who we can. We're going to lose some people, like Cager. We don't want to lose them, but we'll lose them. But our special teams is made up of professional special teams players, not other people that we have to add to a roster at the end. We're strong from 1 to 53 every week, and that's how you win games. Absolutely. So. That's a great, great point. And before we move on to our next bit, I just want to say one other thing uh, that we have not spoken about and I think that we definitely need to speak about. First two games of the season, guys, how bad were our safeties? Terrible. 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 Yep. The last you, guys, you guys were shipping them out there at the yeah. UPS store. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> ground, yeah. too. UPS ground, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it was fully doo brown, so we had to ship them off that way. You know what I mean? But uh, the past two games, two or three games, how have they been? Awesome. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. You know, uh, a defensive coordinator in Salah must have gotten in their heads and coached them up a little bit, but their play has been solid. Their play has been actually better than solid. It's been great. They've got, like, uh, a bunch of picks, great hits and sticks, forced fumbles, uh, great coverage, especially against a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, who I was definitely scared of. Because just like how, like, Tom Brady, you know, never had – or not never, but rarely had the full complement of weapons that I think he should have. You know, he still made the team great. Aaron Rodgers, I look at Aaron Rodgers the same way as far as his greatness, his accuracy and everything. And I thought that there was a chance that, you know, all right, well, you know, maybe Sauce might get beat up on today, even though I love Sauce. Did it happen? Nope. Our safeties, oh my goodness, you know, the first two games of the season, they got wrecked. Did it happen? Nope. You know what I'm saying? And also, remember how much we were getting run on. Did we get run on a lot today? Nope. Nope. Not we'll at come all. Up. We and, came and up. And all the of two, that. The two backup safeties made big contri- contributions on special teams, too. Will Parks was the guy that scored the touchdown on the uh, the block field goal. Yeah. Um, or the recovery. Um, and then um, Ashton Davis had a big hit in coverage today, too. You know, and, and we were ready to ship Aston Davis out too, and he, he has an interception to seal a victory. Um, he has some, you know, some good special teams work, and you know, hopefully, he's improving on the field. I think that the Packers have a lot bigger problems than people are are like talking about right now. I think they're in that Pittsburgh Steeler type of um, situation with. I think with we ben. just made it worse. You know, yeah, we made it worse for them. Absolutely. Oh, definitely. I mean, if you're going to pay your quarterback uh, $50 million and he's an old quarterback, that means that your offensive line is not going to be good because you don't have the money to spend on it. But you know what, Kyle? Um, Jenkins and um, Bakhtiari both played today, both Pro Bowls. Bakhtiari is, like I think, like a four-time All-Pro. Um, they, they were both playing and starting today, and neither one of them left through injury. Mm-hmm. So, But we still got the pressures in the sacks. So, yeah. You know, maybe you know. Obviously, it's more you know than 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 like what we're seeing here. They don't have the weapons. I mean, they they, they have two really good running backs. And I was even telling people, hey, I put up our running back room against Green Bay's running back room, and guess what happened? You know. Mm-hmm. But still, overall, they still have a great tandem in the backfield. Their O line is good. You know what? They just got worked over today. They got worked over on offense and on defense, and like we called out special teams. Yeah, if if Aaron Rodgers falls off the cliff, though, they're in big trouble. Huge. And and or he's at the top he's, five in the draft if, if if he falls off the the, uh, the edge. He's at the ed, that at the age where he could fall off the cliff any minute, like Peyton Manning. Wow. Wow. You know, so um, you know, he could be great, and then all of a sudden, like nothing clicks, um, or you're a little bit too slow with everything. So we'll see. I mean. He's not my favorite player for a million reasons. Uh, so uh, it was even sweeter to beat him as the starting quarterback. And actually, sure. 
that they, they conceded the loss when they brought um uh yeah, love in. in the game. Yeah, you're right about so. that. And plus they wanted to keep um Aaron healthy too. He already she's shaking his hand. I think he hurt his thumb a little bit and his elbow and uh I think part of his his left hip area. That's where Quinn and hit him lovely. It made him fall kind of awkwardly, you know. Yeah, that's like the hip flexor. Yeah, I had one of those. Uh, I had one of those junior year last game of the season, and I remember saying to myself, "If we had to play another game after, I don't know if I'd be able to play." I got hit right in that hip. It was swollen for like four weeks. It was terrible. But listen, well, give a shout out to um, Coach Carroll. Has his uh, history of uh, Baldwin football book coming out. Years of Baldwin football. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. And he's got the book out for that, you know. And, uh, you know, just wanted to shout out Coach Carroll and, um, you know, Coach Steve Carroll, uh, uh, Coach Rich Carroll, Coach Don Clements, and um, all the coaches over there at Baldwin just for not just coaching us, but for uh, coaching a lot of these uh, young Baldwinites and uh, turning them into uh, just great men, you know, because it's more than that. It's just, you know, kind of just uh, – Kind of rearing men for uh, young young boys into into great men for for life for all of these hurdles that we have to hop over in life. So I think uh, being a part of a good program that just teaches you those skills is very helpful. So yeah, thank you, Coach. Great Go job. Bruins, baby. Go Bruins. And you know what? What are we? I think we're what? Uh, are we six and one? All the Bruins this year? No, no results of yesterday. Mm. Yeah, neither do I. I think we won, but I, I can't. I can't confirm. But I know we're ranked. So I, I, I'm getting a lot of texts right now from uh, people that know I'm a Jets fan, and a lot of them are Seattle Seahawks people. Okay. Um, and it's it's funny that today's the day that I get the acknowledgement of uh, <laughs> of my of my fandom. I'm getting texts right now. I got I got a text from Brian Bosset's cousin Bill Hilton. Out of nowhere, ain't <laughs> talking to Jet. You know, my parents, another friend of mine, Robert Samala, who I used to work with at AOL, great guy, love Rob. Okay. So I'm getting texts all over the place, you know what I mean? Yeah, so same here. Cool. You know it. My, da- my, my dad was on a flight with Bill Parcells. Um, he said that he was in first class, like 30 rows in front of him. Okay. okay. <laughs> told him. So, so let, let, let's move on, guys. So we're talking about a lot of good things, right? A lot of good things. Yeah. Happy to talk about this like we're smiling on today's podcast and we're fired up. Yeah, cheese, right? But why are we <laughs> smiling? Like, how did all this good stuff happen? And I'm going to tell you how it happened. Yeah. It is for my vote, executive of the year, Joe Douglas. And that's why all of this good stuff is happening. He hired a young coach that he believed in that's giving in the process of continuing to give our ball club an identity. All righty. He has acquired a lot of draft capital to be able to pick the players that we're seeing now on our team, a very young team that's contributing. Didn't make, you know, successful draft picks in every pick, but I think he's made an overwhelming good he's got an overwhelming good success ratio versus non-successful ratio you know what i'm saying just just look at the team and um and and the free agents that he's brought in i just think if there was a locker room that i would want to be in culture wise right now it would be the new york jets yeah you know what i'm saying yeah like i see the rookies out there they don't feel like rookies they feel like part of the team they don't feel like to me, like, all right, I guarantee you he's carrying the pads for such and such. He's grabbing this guy a drink. All right, when this guy comes over, he's moving over to the side. No, it's not that. It feels like family, you know, where everyone's treated well. Everyone, you know, is just supporting one another. It just feels and looks good over there. And and I just want to just give two thumbs up to Joe Douglas. And I'm voting for you because I'm qualified to vote for executive of the year. How about that? Yeah, and I'm I'm a piggyback off of that. So I'm gonna say a couple things. First of all, he signed his contract on June seventh, twenty nineteen, right? Um, waiver wire pickup, John Franklin Myers on September first, twenty nineteen. Wait, did he have a sack today? I think he did. Yes, he did. I think he did. Right. Um, 
Think about he came, um, he came back after getting hurt because he hurt his ankle, had to leave, came back and got a sack. How about that? He's the warrior. He's the warrior. That's what I'm talking about. So, so think about Nate Herbig, right? We mentioned him earlier, and that's Kyle's favorite dude. Um, I picked, you know, up on that as well when uh, we picked up somebody on the way. When when JD picks up somebody on the waiver wire, you actually pay attention. You're like, that dude might be a contributor at some point, right? Think about where our offensive line was at the beginning of the year. Tackleless, <laughs> right? Tackleless one. Right. We had no tackles, right? And in, in short order, moved ABT out, right? Dwayne Brown snatched him up and got him signed and stuff. Um, rehabbed him, got him back out there after ABT bounced around, left tackle, right tackle, right guard. I mean, he's been all over the place, right? Out of our starters, we only have two people. You came on in 2019. It's 2022 people. We only have two people that he didn't actually bring in. That's, that's Quinnen Williams and C.J. Mosley. All wow. the rest of the starters, offensive and de defensive, are J.D., right? The entire roster had to turn everything around. We had bloated contracts. We had Jamal Adams. We had a lot of things that were going on. We had Adam Gase. I mean, come <laughs> on. I'm still mad at him. Right? And as well you should be. Right? Send him a, Don't send him a Christmas card. No right? way. But think oh. about what the roster looked like. We had Sam Darnold. We had, and he flipped all of these assets, perceived assets, <laughs> you know, for draft picks. And now look at the roster and what we have going on. And we still have all of our draft picks. Right? Yep. So, I mean, it's just amazing. Go down the roster. Dwayne Brown, Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, Corey Davis, Source Gardner. I mean, uh, AVT. I mean, you could just up and down the roster just name people that are contributors today. Quincy yeah. Williams. Quincy. Not Quincy. You know I love Quincy. Yeah, you love that dude. I love Quincy. All right. Love Quincy. Yeah, that's He's another waiver wire pickup. Yep. But, but, I mean, listen, man, J.D., give the man his flowers. The dude has done an excellent job so far coming in the, at, after the draft, right, in 2019, and to put together the roster that we have so far. And when things happen, he doesn't sit on his laurels and say, hey, the season's done. He says, no, I need an offensive line. I'm going to figure it out. Yep. So I, I just love where we are right now. And the thing that I always point to, is the connection between himself and the coaching staff currently Jets, of the Jets. And Thanks. to me, it really took off when Robert Sala came in and his in a, and his um his uh coaching staff and partnered with JD. And you can see how after that point things have started to take off. They've drafted the right people, the right players, and all of those things. So looking forward to more years of this. His contract is up in June of 2025. I love it that Robert Sala basically taps JD and is like, Jermaine is still on the board. Go, I mean, like, what, what do you say? Go get him. Go get him. Go right. get him. <laughs> Go get him. No, he's still on the board. Go get him. Like, I love the fact that one is the general manager who hired the coach. Yeah. There's no ego. No. You know what I'm saying? No. Or at least the ego is minimal. Like, it's football. Everyone has ego, right? Everyone's got – you got to have the ego, right? But it's like, you know, it's that humble confidence, so to speak, that JD can take that and be like, boom, you're right. Let's go get him. And they got him. You know what I'm saying? And I, I just love it. That's what I'm saying. Like, if there is a culture, if there's a locker room culture that I would want to be in right now, it's the Jets. It's the Jets. <laughs> so, so Brian, Brian says how C.J. Mosley, Quinn Williams, the only inherited guys that are on that defense. Biggest move that Joe Douglas made was he took a loud cancer, cut it out of the locker room, and he sent it away and got two draft picks for it. Oh, boy. And when you look at what that Jamal Adams trade was supposed to be, it was supposed to be the missing piece for a Seattle Seahawks Super Bowl. That did not happen. Nope. Now he is um, somebody who has never played a full season. Nope. Um, who 
talent is 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 never in, in question when it comes to an in the box linebacker. Um, he's not not a good safety in my opinion. Never was. Never will be. Um, and he parlayed that move right there. Mm. What somebody else thought they were policing us for. Preach. Yeah. All right. And yeah. and a situation where he had to trade him. He could not keep him. Yeah. So no leverage. And, and 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 no way out and he's parlayed that into a roster of first year and second year player dominated um at all, at all the positions you look at all those positions besides cj and quinn and williams um you know and you know they're either veteran waiver wire pickups that he was a student enough to get or they're built from the draft from from Things acquired through the Jamal Adams trade, the Sam Darnold trade, and a, a lot of other wheeling and dealing and maneuvering to 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 get things done. So wait, wait, is it is it directly ABT and Garrett Wilson? At least from the first round draft picks, could we attribute those two players to that trade? Yes, I, 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 think, I think so. I, I think if you're technically saying like the, the picks we got and and the selections we made, yeah. Um, and if you think about to just break down the ABT thing for a second, we got he he got um, crapped on for trading up to get a guard. Well, newsflash: he didn't trade up to get a guard. He traded up to get the most versatile lineman in the NFL. Yep. And we knew that because we for weeks were mocking trade scenarios to get up to there. I mean, I. You don't know how many times I sat there and tried to get to 16 to pick him. We you wind up doing it did. at 14, which is which is crazy um, that 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 you know we were kind of so aligned with the with the front office's thought process on that. But we didn't get a guard. We got a guy that's lined up at left tackle, right tackle, at guard, and like I said earlier, I leave him at tackle right now because he's one of the best tackles in the league, um, and the numbers prove that week in and week out. Um, and that's not against crap defenses. That's against you know top three defenses in the league. I'm interested to see what his PFF score was today. I don't think he got B one. Never mentioned his name, man. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, him, <laughs> him, him and him, him and Nate Her- Herbert just you know sitting out there playing football. You well, know what I mean? What, and, I, I'd say you know because I, I guess we can all say. And if Kerry if Kerry were here, I think he'd say the same thing. I think we're all in unison in saying that Joe Douglas is an excellent general manager because we just totally unpacked everything there. And you know what? He went to the Ozzie Newsom school of general managing. Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. Ozzie Newsom has, has been known as to be a, a, a great general manager. The, the Baltimore Ravens always, always have players. Always have players, you know? So it just depends on how they would fashion them, you know? But, but they always have players, and, and they're always a good team. So it's kind of like how Pittsburgh is always a good team. Yeah. How uh, Baltimore is always a good team, you know, and, you know, New England was always a good team until, you know, recently, whatever. But you have certain franchises that historically are always good teams. And usually that's because of the work of either a singular great player or, and in addition to, you know, uh, having an excellent general manager. And Ozzie Newsom. He came out of that school, and um, what's the uh, current? Um, I think the current uh, uh, GM for Baltimore, who's still good, is Eric DaCosta, and he's good too. He also he spent time in that Howie Roseman. He did um, the thing, and, and the <laughs> Eagles. You got to give the Eagles credit for being able to make take lemons and make lemonade all the time. Absolutely. You know, they won a, a Super Bowl with a backup right before quarterback. He got to us. He came from Philly right before he got. He came to us. So it was Baltimore. Then Philly and then us. So yeah, you're you're right, Kyle. 100. percent You know. So listen, that's yeah, man. I'm I'm so happy we got him. I mean, things are changing, and the great the greatest thing about it is like when you're when you see the change, like you're living through it, and it's like oh my god, oh my goodness, this is really happening. I'm seeing the change here, and that's the part that's just dope to me. I, I love it. I love it. Of course. I just keep seeing my team win, baby. Let's go, Jet. Let's go. You. What's up, Denver? What you got, huh? 
<laughs> so let, 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 let's Go quickly ahead. talk about this Denver game, right? So um, Denver's coming in with – is Melvin Gordon still there starting back, or is he still healthy? Yeah, as far as I know, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, it's him and that dude Boone, but Melvin Gordon's the number one since um, since the other dude is hurt. He blew out his ACL. Yeah. Did Denver play today? They play Monday night. Okay, that's so that's another good thing. So we got a team coming off a Monday night game. Um, that's going to be a short week for them. Um, and uh, my guess is that our front office, smart smart people that they are. We'll get into Denver a little early, get acclimated to that mile high air. Yeah. Get Greg the leg out there, kicking some 60 yard field goals in there. Greg the leg consistently scoring points for me <laughs> on fantasy as well. <laughs> um, but I think that um, if we're looking at our, our next opponent, Russell Wilson is having a rough year. And yeah. per- personally, I hope he has a great game on Monday night um, so that it's not the Jets that he decides to have a breakout game against. No, nah, no, nah, listen, I, I I want him to suck on Monday just like he does <laughs> when he sees us. Let's just keep it consistent here. I don't want him to figure anything out, you know, like everything, keep it in field goal range, no touchdowns, you know, just like you have bad football on offense, just like you have been doing. I want to see the exact same thing when we see you. Because when we do, if that's the case, uh, I mean, we 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 gonna win that game, man. This is a good chance that we can win that game, and we're already four and two. Think about where we are right now. Oh and my is but is Buffalo losing? Because they were the last time I looked. Let me let me check again. Losing check while you checking, B. Uh, they're winning ten well, seven. They they what? They're winning ten seven, but I mean, it's, you know, we got to wrap this up so we can go watch that game. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> about to wrap this up soon. Two things I want to say. Yeah, Court Sutton, Monday night. I hope he has two hundred yards receiving, but doesn't score. <laughs> you know, doesn't score. I got him in fantasy, but I don't want him scoring. That's the thing. Don't what score. Up? Just have two hundred yards. Secondly, um, uh, Jamal Jamal Adams. All righty, Jamal Adams to me is basically. Quincy Williams, if he tried to play strong safety. Funny. Oh, <laughs> snap. <laughs> anybody anybody familiar with our text thread would know how much of an of, of a, uh, a indictment that is. Right uh, their cover skills are about the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he but but he's good like Quincy Williams in the box when he plays. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. All right, folks, listen. Uh, this has been a great hour of uh, talking Jets football, a great hour of the BK BK podcast. Kerry, we miss you. We'll see you on the next one. All righty. So everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the BK BK podcast. We want to be able to keep bringing you the latest news and viewpoints of where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reigning supreme. Woo! So keep watching. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on our BKBK Podcast fan page on Facebook, on Twitter at BKBK Podcast, on Instagram at BKBK Podcast, as well as on YouTube. Uh, when you go to YouTube, type in BKBK Podcast. Make sure, guys, hit the like and subscribe button, all right? And uh, just show the love. And um, if you can't watch us, you can listen to us on iTunes. Go to BKBK Podcast at Podomatic.com, all right, guys and girls? So that's it. Let's go Jets. Let's go Baldwin Bruins. And listen, let's go Knicks because the season's going to kick up soon, too. How about some of that? Let's go. Yeah. Got that lead. Yeah. Go ready tonight, to go. Baby. Let's go Yankees let's tonight, go. baby. Let's go. Stop playing. Stop playing. Stop playing. Let's go. All right. Let's go TBK We're out, man. Yo, we drop that music. It's already dropped, baby. <laughs> <laughs>